When it comes to setting the ideal learning environment for an individual with PDA or ADHD, uh, one will find that they have to consider an awful lot. Uh, minimizing distractions, uh, ensuring that the environment is free from superfluous sensory information uh, such as noises or li uh, lights and uh, even a multiplicity of colors. Um, one must consider how the information is conveyed uh, whether it comes from a teacher or a book I found that you know I I didn't realize I was at school until I left school and then upon further reflection I realized that I've been in school all along you know a lesson resides within every experience and these days my perfect classroom situation could be right here with a, a pile of books so there needs to be a prevailing overtone of freedom when it comes to setting the perfect learning environment for someone with an ADHD or PDA brain um, because freedom is our muse in a way it's our impetus it's our driving force um, so long as we have freedom to learn then the possibilities are endless and the lessons are endless. Um, it doesn't feel very free to us because we can feel very much um, in, in. We can feel very much imprisoned by a certain topic at any given time, and we have no freedom from that topic. We have no freedom from the thoughts uh, related to the topic because the thoughts won't leave us alone. Upon researching anything, there are so many tidbits. The, the minutia of the topic is vast and seemingly endless, and we can't quite relax until every last shred of information on that topic is stored in our noggins. Um, only then can we relax, albeit for a short time, because we will drift to a new topic. Drift as in, uh, it, it would be a kind of segue from one thing, like it could be a within politics, it could be an obsession with uh, capitalism, and then you think about uh, things related to capitalism, it could be socialism, maybe the next thing. And then you may think of socialist countries, and then you'll, you'll want to learn about the history of that country itself, and you may learn about a ruler of that country, and then you feel inclined to delve into that uh, ruler's life and then you realize oh this is um, becoming a psychological endeavor psychology becomes the next thing so it's like it's like a word association kind of thing and that's that's something to take note of as well association this uh, ADHD mind and PDA mind are constantly making associations um, with not just words but anything any movement that someone makes or that we make and we may end up uh, subliminally learning or peripherally learning and what I mean by that is uh, if a teacher is trying to get a point across 
and she has a, a croak in his or her throat uh, we'll immediately think of frogs frogs croak and then we can't stop thinking about frogs and maybe that's the root of an obsession with frogs um, and then we'll continue to we may make uh, croaking and riveting noises so we are literally swept away in currents of thought all the time and when you kind of allow that current to do its thing and to follow its own course that's when we start storing information because if we submit to that current of thought then that's it that's all we need we need the freedom to submit to the thought and then everything gets picked up along the way new concepts as I uh, discussed previously uh, new, um, new new uh, words uh, we may have to ignite and fine-tune our mathematical reasoning in certain areas um, and it could be I don't know it, within school that could be seen as a huge problem because the, the ch a child wouldn't be focusing on what the teacher is trying to teach but they're attempting to follow the current of thought to its destination but they're not allowed to they have to focus on what the teacher's saying so r reading alone is the perfect learning environment for the ADHD or PDA brain because we can essentially follow the current of thought to wherever it may go to wherever it may take us and I used the word destination earlier which um, was a mistake because there isn't a destination when it comes to learning and that's the beauty of it and I think the ADHD and PDA brain can really grasp that notion that there is no destination uh, university graduation can seem meaningless to many it's a great achievement and I think it is I don't have a degree myself because I failed to derive the meaning from that kind of thing because I'm still at school it, it would indicate that learning has reached its destination and the education process terminates and that's a scary thought for me it's a limiting thought for me um, let's say for example let's um, imagine let's envisage the ideal teacher for a child with said brain that teacher would feel very equal to us because we still value learning we still value um, the process of learning and we still value people but when information is presented in a rather author or authoritarian dictatorial or even draconian and Victorian kind of way then we notice an immediate slope it's like a hump in the road um, and we operate a bit like liquid in that we strive to even everything out so we will detect a hump in the road when the teacher adopts a authoritarian stance and we endeavor to equalize the environment so that's a huge distraction there's a person here who regards themselves as themselves as our superior um, and this is strictly for people on the spectrum and people who are neurodiverse some believe that old-fashioned uh, way of learning that textbook classroom situation teach it with um, 
quite a pronounced teacher-student separation works. I'm not talking on behalf of people who think that way. If you think if that works for you, whatever. I'm talking purely about neurodiverse people. Many of us will detect the unequal nature of the situation. So the teacher would have to, well, n not have to, I'm not going to use a word like, you know, have, because it implies that I'm being demanding and I don't want to come across in that way at all. But the ideal teacher would be there to share with us something so profound and interesting. It would help if they loved their job, because I think we have an exquisite detection system whereby we can easily suss out who's passionate about what they're doing and who's not. So if the teacher loved their job, if they were... E and when I use words like equal to us, I, I'm talking in a sense that they might set a task and they might join in with the task themselves. And maybe afterwards we can talk about, as they do with us, that they're maybe... Um, a, you know, a group of children are assigned to a creative uh, writing project. They have to finish something by the end of class and then they will review it. But perhaps if the teacher joined in as well and we were allowed to comment on the bits we liked and maybe even didn't like, at the risk of sounding precocious, then that could work because there would be a sense of we're all doing this together. And if the teacher kind of let uh, acknowledge the fact that our minds may be interested in one particular thing, so if the, the teacher could say, what could we do today? And it could be an English class, it could be a French class, it could be, you know, like, what should we do within these parameters? You know, not literally anything, but if it's one particular class, that could there's a possibility that that could work. So, learning is possible, it's just difficult to find viable methods of learning when you are this way. <laughs>